This productive pattern was banned for use in competitions, and today I'm going to show you how to tie it. We'll secure some white thread to the hook shank and snap the excess free. We'll prevent our bead from spinning around the hook by inserting some lead-free wire, securing it, and helicoptering the excess free. Lay down a thread base until you reach your hook point. We'll then grab my new favorite mop material called Galaxy Mop. You can pick it up from the JStockard website for 15% off using the code above. This particular one is in tan. Secure the mop material tightly to the top of your hook shank, and if you want it to be extra secured, you can add some super glue. Snip your galaxy mop to length, and wrap your thread to the head of the fly. Here, we'll fold over our thread, create a loop, and wrap it back towards the mop material. Return your thread to the head of the fly, leaving us with this dubbing loop. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a laser dubbing in tan. Insert it into our dubbing loop and spin it up. We'll then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll wrap our dubbing up the body until we reach the thread. Secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Finish it off by brushing it out to give it an extra buggy look. And this is the Galaxy Mop, one of my new favorite variations of the mop fly to fish. This is one of the world's most used and popular fly patterns. To tie it, we'll start off with some brown thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping until you reach the bend of the hook and grab some pheasant tail. We'll grab about five or six fibers, measure them to be roughly the length of the hook shank, and secure them to the back of the fly. Once complete, we'll continue wrapping towards the bead, further securing the pheasant tail as we go. Snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the wire into your bead and secure wrapping back towards the tail. We'll bring our thread forward just past the hook point, grab some more pheasant tail and secure it to our hook shank once again wrapping back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping our pheasant tail forward in closed touching spirals. You can do so by just wrapping it around with your fingers. However, if your vise has a rotary function, this makes the process far easier. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the pheasant tail in place and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward, counter wrapping our pheasant tail as we go. Doing so will help increase the durability of this pattern. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and helicopter the excess free. Grab a few more strands of pheasant tail and secure them with the tips facing out past the bead. Generally, I measure mine to be about one and a half bead lengths. Continue securing the pheasant tail on top of our hook wrapping back towards the wire. Once complete, bring your thread forward and grab some peacock curl. We'll select a couple strands, secure them to the body, and wrap back towards our pheasant tail. We'll return our thread to the bead and begin wrapping our peacock curl in closed spirals towards the head of the fly. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping our excess furry. We'll then take our fingers and use them to splay out our pheasant tail tips to form some legs. Once happy, we'll fold over the remaining pheasant tail fibers, secure them just behind the bead, and snip the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place. The pheasant tail is a classic pattern that is one of the most known and used patterns out there. It makes for a great general pattern, imitating mayflies and caddis exceptionally well. If you want to catch more fish, today's fly is for you. To start this pattern, we'll grab some 140 UTC in fluorescent pink, secure that to the hook shank, and snip the excess free. Continue to the bend of the hook, grabbing some pink squirmy worm material. We'll secure this tightly to the back of the fly, wrapping towards the bead. Flatten the body out as much as you can, but don't worry about it too much because we'll be covering it in our next step. Once we're happy with how the tail looks, grab a second piece of squirmy worm material, tying it on the body of your fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, return your thread to the head of the fly and begin wrapping your squirmy worm material in loose spirals. Pulling the material too tight can result in it falling apart after the first fish. Once you reach your thread, secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We will then whip finish to hold it in place and if you would like to support the channel and purchase a few, you can visit my website. We're going to be tying one of the earliest known styles of fly. It was first recorded over 500 years ago and still catches fish. For starters, we're going to use some orange thread. Here I'm using a Vivas in size 16 aught. 
pull the excess free and grab some amber brassy wire. We'll snip off a small section and attach that to our hook shank. Secure tightly and wrap it back well into the bend of the hook. Once complete, we will start creating a transition towards the head of our fly. One of the easiest ways to do this is to wrap your thread to the head of the fly, proceed to wrap back towards the bend and stop just short of where you did previously. Continue to do this several times until you reach the head of the fly once again. Once we're happy with our body transition, we'll grab our brassy wire and wrap in open spirals to the head of our fly. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our brassy wire and helicopter the excess free. Wrap back slightly onto the body and grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a orange synthetic as well as a hare's ear. We'll blend these together, create a dubbing noodle and wrap that around the body of our fly. Next, I like to brush this out, giving it a nice buggy look, pulling the excess free, and grabbing a partridge feather. We will pull back the fibers slightly, leaving a small triangle, snip that free, and use it to attach it to the head of our fly. We will then hackle this partridge feather around the head, secure it tightly, and snip the excess free. Pull the fibers backwards and wrap onto them slightly, giving them a brushed back look. Next, we can whip finish, holding everything in place. Snip free, burn off any excess fibers, and use some UV resin to add durability. This is a modern variation of the classic soft hackle partridge in orange. While the pattern is over 500 years old, it still catches fish. This is one of the world's most used and successful fly patterns. To tie it, we'll grab some Vivas in black, securing it tightly to our hook shank and snapping the excess free. We will then insert some lead free wire to help hold our bead in place, securing it tightly and helicoptering the strands free. We will then grab some silver brassy wire, insert this into our bead, and begin wrapping it well into the bend of our hook. Once complete, we will begin building up a body transition with our thread. One simple way to do this is return your thread towards the head of the fly and then start wrapping back towards your wire, stopping just before you reach where you started with your thread. Repeating this process will make a nice transition towards the head of our fly that you can make as bulky or as slim as you'd like. Once we're happy with our transition, we will grab our wire and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to make sure the wraps are evenly spaced. Once complete, we will secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and helicoptering the excess free. Grab yourself some peacock hurl. I'll select two strands and secure this to the head of the fly. Securing them by wrapping slightly back on the body and returning our thread to the bead. We will begin wrapping our peacock around the head of the fly until we reach our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front of the peacock as well as behind and snipping the excess furry. And this is the zebra midge. If you would like to support the channel and pick up a few, you can visit my website here to see this and all of the variations of it I like to use. Many believe that this highly successful fly pattern should be banned. To start this pattern, we'll grab some UV orange beads, inserting it over our hook, and use a lighter in order to adhere it to the top of the fly. Be sure to lift it in an upward motion as to not close your hook gap. Additionally, be sure to fill this with a UV resin or super glue to make sure it stays in place. We will We'll then grab some egg yarn, here I'm using a pale white, and secure that taking thread wraps at the head of our fly. We'll snip it to length and pull away any loose fibers. We will then whip finish to hold everything in place, seat the knot, and snip it free. Finally, we will brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. The pattern is so simple and requires very little skill that many believe it should not be used in fly fishing. However, eggs are a natural forage and extremely productive at catching fish. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.
Today, we are making a must-have fly for all fly fishermen. To begin this pattern, we will start by wrapping a lead-free wire around the head of our fly. Take several wraps around your hook shank and finish by jamming it into the bead. We will then select some black thread, secure this tightly to our hook shank, snapping the excess free. Use your thread to secure the excess wire and also secure all the wire wraps in place. Helicopter the excess free and begin wrapping to the bend of our hook. Here we will build a small thread dam that will become important in our next step. Grab some brown biots, select two and place them in a V formation, tying them onto the back of the fly. Secure tightly and wrapping up the hook shank until we reach our wire. Snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I've selected chartreuse, which is one of my favorite variations. Secure your wire tightly to your hook shank and wrap back towards our biots. Once complete, smooth out the back section of your fly and wrap your thread forward, leaving a little bit of room for the next steps. Next, we will grab our wire and begin wrapping these in closed spirals until we reach our thread. Do your best to allow each wrap to touch the previous one, leaving no gaps. This is a little easier with a rotating vise, but can be done without it. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the wire in place and helicopter the excess free. Select some uni mylar, here I'm using pearl. Tying it just behind the bead and wrapping back towards our wire. We will then select some thin skin, here I'm using clear. Tie this around the head of our fly, once again wrapping back towards the wire. Our next step will be grabbing some peacock curl. Selecting about two to three fibers and securing them to the head of the fly. Once complete, we can begin wrapping our peacock curl forward towards our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Next, grab a partridge feather. I prefer to select a darker brown feather. Snip off a section so it forms a V. Tie it just behind the bead so it looks something like this. With this complete, fold over your thin skin and secure it just behind the bead. You will then grab the stem of our partridge feather, pulling it forward carefully to shorten our wings. I like to stop when my wings reach where my wire started. Once happy, snip the excess free, fold over your mylar and secure it tightly in place. Snip both the mylar and the thin skin off closely and whip finish to hold everything in place. An important part of this pattern is some UV resin. This one in particular is my favorite. You can find it in the links below. And add a drop of it just behind the bead covering our wing case. If you'd like to support the channel and pick up a few of these, you can find them listed in all my favorite variations in my fly shot listed below. This pattern is probably the only dry fly that you'll ever need. We'll start off with some black Vivis thread. We'll secure our thread to the hook shank, creating a base for our next step. Snap the excess free and grab some parawing material. Here I've selected some high vis orange. Secure it tightly a little ways from the hook eye. Begin wrapping your thread up the parawing material, creating a post. It's best to start this with some loose wraps, wrapping tighter and tighter as you go. We will then work our way back down to the bottom and create some thread dams, ensuring our post isn't going to spin around the hook shank. Once complete, we will wrap our thread to the back of the hook, snipping off the excess of our heroin. Grab a brown feather, we'll select about 5 to 10 fibers, and measure them to be about the length of our hook shank. Secure them to the back of the hook, and wrap forward, further securing them up towards our post. Snip the excess free, and wrap back towards the tail. Here we'll grab some gray dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping forward towards our post, creating a transition from the tail to the post of our fly. Carefully avoiding not to trap any fibers in the process. Once complete, we will grab some saddle hackle. Here I'm using grizzly as well as a brown color. Rip some fibers free, leaving an exposed stem of our feather, and tie them onto our post. We'll secure it tightly, snip the excess free, 
and begin wrapping both feathers towards the top of the post. Once again, taking loose wraps to begin and securing tighter and tighter as you go. Work your way back down to the base and grab some more dubbing. Here I'm going to be using a two-tone, so I have selected black UV dubbing. Make a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this towards the hook eye. We want to continue our transition from the back of the fly, with the head being the thickest part. Grab more dubbing as needed and continue to work back towards our post. We want to finish with our thread above the body for the next step. We can then begin to hackle our two feathers, wrapping them around the post towards the base. Once happy, we'll carefully secure them, being cautious not to trap any feathers beneath our thread. Snip the excess free, and grab a whip finisher. Once again, we'll be careful not to trap any fibers. And this is the Parachute Atoms. If I had to choose to fish one dry fly, I would choose this one in several different colors and sizes. Today, we're gonna be tying up one of my favorite variations of the Golden Retriever. We're gonna use some flat Ultra Thread 140 in black. This is definitely my favorite thread to tie with for any streamer. And we're gonna wrap up to the front and use a lead free wire to help secure this bead in place so it's not spinning around the hook when we're finished with this fly. Once we get that secure, you can just helicopter it free and then wrap our thread all the way to the back of the hook shank. Now we're gonna grab some olive marabou and I like to use the tips because all this fine feathers that we have adds a lot of action to the fly. We're gonna measure that out to be about one and a half times the hook length. If you go much further than that, it can get wrapped up in the hook. Secure our feather to the hook, fold over the marabou, and then wrap our thread all the way to the front, fold the marabou back over, and then secure at the head of the fly. This is just gonna help us build up a body so once we get that tied down, we're going to snip that excess free and then try to get all these feathers to lay flat. Next up, we're going to grab some crystal flash. This is in olive, but orange also looks really good with this olive pattern as well. Secure that to the hook. And then fold it over and secure it on the other side. That way we only have to use these four strands to do both sides. We're going to secure it down a little bit tighter. And then we're gonna snip it to length and we want it to be a little bit longer than our marabou. Next up, we're gonna grab some UV Estaz. And I like to trim off the tips of it and that way we can just secure the braided line of it straight to the fly. Now that we're done with that, we wanna create a nice uniform body. So we're gonna wrap our thread around our hook shank until we completely cover any visible feathers, braided line, or anything like that. And try to keep it as uniform as possible. If you want to add a taper to it, a lot of people like their golden retrievers tied like that. Personally, I like mine to be nice and uniform and kind of thin. I think it adds a good profile to the fly. Now once you're happy with your body, we can move on to the next part. So we're going to grab our staz and we're going to start to wrap that up the fly. Now you want to keep some of this black underbody visible. So we're going to give it a little bit of space in between. And on each wrap, we're going to grab the staz and start to pull it backwards. So we're not trapping any of the fibers underneath it. Now once we reach that point and you're happy with your wraps, you can grab your thread and secure that just behind the head and then snip it free. Grab a whip finisher and we can use this to create a band around the head of the fly. You can use as many or as few wraps as you want as long as you use enough to secure it, about six to eight wraps. I like my band to stand out a little bit. I think it's a, a cool little addition to this fly. Once that's secure, we'll snip it free and then we can trim any fibers that are sticking out past the head to add a little bit of a rounded shape towards the back of the fly. And then once we're happy with everything, grab a little bit of head cement, a little bit goes a long way, and then use this to make sure our thread wraps are gonna stay in place. And there you go, this is my variation of a golden retriever. 
It's a excellent fly pattern that I have had a ton of luck with. Today, we're gonna to be tying a paradigm variation. For starters, we're gonna use some Vivas thread in olive. We'll start by securing our thread to the hook shank, snapping the excess free, and inserting a small lead-free wire to help hold our bead in place. Secure tightly and helicopter free. Next, we'll wrap towards the bend of the hook and grab some white feathers. We'll select about five to 10 fibers, pull those free and measure them to be the length of the hook shank. Secure them to the back of the fly, further securing by wrapping towards the bead. Pull the excess free and grab some gold wire. This one in particular is a small gold wire that we will wrap to the back of our hook. Once complete, we will use our thread to create a seamless body transition towards the head of our fly. Grab our gold wire and start to wrap this in open spirals till we reach our thread. Once complete, we will secure, taking wraps both in front as well as behind our gold wire and helicopter free. Next, we can whip finish, securing everything in place. Seat the knot and snip free. I like to make sure to burn off any tag ends for this next step. Grab some UV resin and paint this over our body. This is gonna give it a nice shiny and smooth look. Once happy, we can use a UV light to fix it in place. For this next step, we're gonna use some eyeshadow. Now, if you don't have any of your own like me, you can always steal some from your wife or your girlfriend. I like to use this midnight black color for this particular pattern. You'll also need to grab some UV resin. We'll mix these together and add a drop of our mixture onto the bead as well as part of the body. Make sure you take your time with this. If you have a rotating vise, it's very helpful to get the proper shape. This fly with the tungsten bead is perfect for pocket water trout. I like to use this one in particular anywhere I find blue wing olives. If you wanna try these flies out for yourself, but don't tie, you can always submit a custom order on my website and I'd be happy to tie some up for you. And I will see you in the next one.